hardest part about rebuilding an auto is the fact that people just generally accept that you can't do it or that it's impossible. Mm. Like it's not, someone has to build it, right? So where did the guy, the guy who builds autos every day, where did he start doing them? Yeah. He didn't sit there going, I can't do it. At some point he had to do the first one and it might have blown up, but <laughs> whatever you learn from that, you're going to put into the next one. So mm. if you're prepared to put enough time into trying to learn how to do something, you can do it. That's a good quote. Spoken but not written. <laughs> it's not an easy job. I didn't walk into it expecting it to be easy. It's not like, you know, changing a tyre. It's, it's complicated. If you're willing to devote the time to it, if you have somewhere where you can work clean and you can do it thoroughly, then it's not impossible. But if you've never touched anything mechanical before, I wouldn't advise starting on rebuilding an auto. <laughs> but, it, yeah, I'm not going to stand here and say don't do it because a lot of people said that to me. Yeah. Hopefully it works. <laughs> yeah. So we're back here at Bayswater Auto Care. Got the control back up on the hoist. It's been about three weeks since we did the last video. Um, in the meantime, I've rebuilt the auto. We'll have a bit more on that later. But uh, before we put the gearbox back in, we're going to have a look at the rear main seal. I've got a new one to put in there. And yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, this is a bit of a, not a bush mechanic trick, but it is a thing. Alright, so, instead of pulling off the whole rear housing here, which you can do, I don't have a gasket for it on me, so we're just changing out the rear seal. So how to get one of these seals out, obviously you can't get at the inside of it, to pull, push it out. We do two tiny holes, one either side, in the seal itself, and we get a couple of small wood screws, thread them in, grab some pliers, pull the seal out. They can be either very easy, or they can involve a hammer. Oh, beautiful. Just like that. So as you see, nothing's hit the actual seal surface there. It's just into the surface of the seal itself. It's crazy how it's all this work just for like, what, a $6 part? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's pretty much an engine for you, or anything. Yeah. Complex moving parts. All it takes is one thing to fail. Mm -hmm. So these are a double lip seal. To the outer lip is to stop dust, yep. water, and whatever else is getting in. It's more, I guess the auto bail housing is definitely cleaner than a manual one to start with, but yeah. The dust seal keeps everything out from this, which is your main oil seal. The lip that faces inwards, sits against the oil pressure. Skits. All right, so let's bang that yeah. in. Now, it's a good idea to always put something on that lip surface, like a bit of Vaseline if you've got some, or engine oil, ATF, anything really, as long as the seal's not dry, because before it lubricates, it'll burn, and if it burns, it's going to start leaking again. Yeah. <laughs> One crank seal done. Don't leak. Don't leak. <laughs> I'm watching you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things. It was just starting to weep. I wasn't sure. Um, there wasn't any patches under the car or anything yet, but I pulled the gearbox out and I thought, well, if it's starting to weep, <laughs> you're not going to not do it. Stay there, rear main seal. Do your job. This is my shiny new gearbox um, that I've rebuilt over the past three weeks. So I lost drive in this car after um, doing a stall test in the shed. I was seeing if I'd just tuned the carby up and I wanted to see if the engine would die when I got off the power, which it didn't, so that was good. Um, but I lost drive, which wasn't ideal. Uh, I thought it would be a problem in the gearbox, but my mate at SD cut the converter open for me, split it, and it had sheared. There's about eight um, pressed factory rivets that hold the turbine hub to the turbine, which is what slides on the input shaft of the gearbox. Those rivets had sheared. Not sure if it was due to age, wear and tear, but it was a Ricoh converter in the car, so it's obviously been played with before by someone other than Nissan. So who's to say whether that was a factory fault from whoever rebuilt that converter originally, or if it was just bad luck. But um, uh, SDE rebuilt me a converter for this, which is over there, we'll show you that later. It's just a factory converter, nothing crazy, though we did put a steel hub in it as opposed to the factory one, so that should be stronger. It's welded and riveted. But the gearbox is rebuilt. Uh, I put an overhaul kit through it. I measured all the clutch packs, so all the plates were unworn, so that makes me think that it's been rebuilt sometime not too long ago, because with 400,000 Ks, you'd expect the clutch plates to be pretty worn. Um, so overhaul kit, which basically contains every gasket, O-ring, seal, and uh, Teflon ring in the box put that through it and cleaned everything, which was a major part, because as you can imagine with the converter wearing out, all of that shrapnel and crap from that's gone through the rest of the gearbox. Um, so cleaned everything out, uh, which was probably the most time consuming part of the whole thing. Uh, replaced one broken spring in the rear 
clutch in the gearbox, which was, again, not sure if it was broken due to wear and tear or not being installed last time the box was built, not being installed properly. It's also replaced all the bushes because they don't seem like they'd been done. Um, so pressed out all the old bushes, pressed in a new set and pretty much checked over everything else, cleaned the valve body out, tested all the solenoids. So hopefully she's sweet. Yeah. We'll see how we go. Do you have any advice for anyone like attempting an auto rebuild? Like, should they just stay clear or is um, it doable? I wouldn't say stay clear. Um, it's not an easy job. I didn't like, I didn't walk into it expecting it to be easy, so I wouldn't advise that. It's not like, you know, changing a tire, it's, it's complicated. But, um, I mean, if you're willing to devote the time to it, if you have somewhere where you can work clean and you can do it thoroughly, then it's not impossible. But if you've never touched anything mechanical before, I wouldn't advise starting on rebuilding an auto. But it, yeah, I'm not going to stand here and say don't do it because a lot of people said that to me. Yeah. Hopefully it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's not impossible, but it is just very time-consuming, and you get an appreciation of why these things are so expensive to rebuild. You know, people say, "Oh, it cost me three grand to get my auto rebuilt. Now all the auto rebuilders are." rip-offs, well they're not, it's just time consuming. Parts aren't that expensive, so I think all up doing everything in this box probably cost me about 300 bucks. So the parts themselves aren't expensive, it's just the labour. I probably put 50 hours into this thing, yeah. But if you if you were doing it every day, you'd get it done in a day. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's just, yeah, just a matter of time. But you gotta look at, you know, if you're charging 100 bucks an hour and you spend 20 hours doing something, there's two grand. So, you know, that's all what the money is in rebuilding autos is labour. Yeah. But um, anyway, let's put it in the car. Hopefully it goes forward with four speeds <laughs> yeah. and backwards with one and not the other way around. That's it. Yeah. We'll see. Alright. So yeah, um, <clears throat> because the rivets had sheared in the turbine in the other one, the turbine had then sort of dropped, which meant that things had been touching that weren't meant to right. at engine speed, which is less than ideal. Yeah. Yeah. So, it basically it was lucky that it happened in the shed without the car moving, because if it had been moving, I reckon it would have done a lot more damage yeah. to the rest of the box. Yeah. So, that converter was a complete throwaway. None of the parts out of it were usable. So this is, I'm not sure if you call it reconditioned or new. You can't get new parts anymore. This is less reconditioned. You're right, so you can't go and buy a new torque converter. Ah, uh, no, not for this. So everything, just old ones have been re re Yeah. yeah. They use parts out of different um, different cars. Like, that's an RE403A, yeah. which is in the patrol. Then there's an RE4R01A, which is in, like, R31 Skylines and maybe R32s. And I think they even came in the VLs when they had an RB30 in them. Yeah. I'm not sure on that. Okay. But, um, yeah, they were really common. And the main housing of that shares a fair few of the parts with the O1A. Main differences are, like, I think the pump's slightly different, the output shaft's different, and the rear housing is obviously much bigger to fit a transfer case on it, whereas the other one's a normal down to a drive shaft. So there's parts like that are different, and there's more clutch packs, I think, from memory to make it handle more torque. Right, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, the I think the steel centers out of a different Nissan converter. Yeah. As such, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, should be a good thing. It's all set up so standard it's not like a it's not a not a low or a high stall or anything, it's just standard stall. Yeah. There was an option, I could have done whatever I wanted, but it's a standard motor. Yeah. Well, it's getting used for four wheel driving so there's yeah. no I'm not gonna put a high stall in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are the same guys that built my high stall in my uh, Trimatic in the VH, which is awesome. So <laughs> this should go just as well. So we already got that half full of ATF. Yeah. No, I gotta do that still. It's not a major issue if you don't. With the car off, it'll probably hold about a litre. It'll sit in there. Right. So when you first start the car, if you have it, if you have it empty and you fill the gearbox to the normal point on the dipstick, as soon as it fires, it's gonna pump into there. Right. So you can do it that way. Yeah. There's no big issue with it. It's just that you'll be wasting a lot more time starting the car, turning it off, filling it up, starting yeah, it, turning yeah, it off, filling yeah, it up. Yeah. So when you fill it halfway, you're already halfway there. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Just saving time. And it's better for the internals of the converter to have something in them when you first crank it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just to the point of lubrication that it's not dry metal on metal. There are bearings in here. Yeah. Like I said even when that's out of even when the car's out of gear, that's still spinning an engine RPM. Right. So yeah. yeah. It's better that it have something in there rather than nothing. Yeah. There's no danger in overfilling them. You just end up with a mess. Yeah. You have to yeah. tip it on the side and it'll pour out everywhere. 
spot on. Cool. Now with these, very gently place it on. You're gonna feel three clicks. One's that stator, the input shaft, and the oil pump. You wanna make sure you line it up with the oil pump, because if you don't, and a lot of people make this mistake, you'll end up with not enough clearance between this and the flex plate. As you try and do the bell housing up, you'll wreck the oil pump, because the converter neck will try and push through it. So that's one. Might actually be in there, I reckon. We did go through this when I did the gearbox on my VH, but I'll go through it again. It's a really easy way to check before you risk damaging the car. So this is obviously the face that mounts to the back of the motor, to the face that bolts to the flex plate. Get a quick measure off that. It's about 22 mil. We go over to the car. Now your converter should always slip in further than it needs to. So there should always be a little bit of clearance. Then as you do the bolts up, it'll pull back towards the flex plate. So now we'll run back here. That's the surface that it bolts to on the flex plate. To that surface there, which is 27 mil. In other words, that converter's not in far enough. There you go. So and that's why we check. That is why we check. <laughs> yeah. Find that's a lot easier way. With most old school gearboxes, some don't have, or well, they have more of a cutaway at the bottom of the motor so you can see it easier. Yeah. With this, it's pretty enclosed, yeah. so you can't yeah. really tell. And that oil pump drive isn't, you know, it's not designed to take any sort of load backwards at all. Right. So you will wreck it really easily before yeah. you even know you've done it. So what you're trying to line up is these two flats here either side. Yeah. So you've got that spline to line up, this spline to line up, right, that's your input shaft, your stator so that doesn't move, that's the input from the engine, and this is your oil pump drive for the pump in the front of the gearbox. Yeah. Just those two flats. They either have flats or two tags usually, I think some have splines, but they're not a real high load thing so they don't have to be particularly strong. Yeah, yeah. So that's one, two. Yep. That's the input and the stator. Now we just try and line up that oil pump groove. There we go. That was the last one then. So now we'll recheck that. I find this just makes you feel a lot safer about doing it. You can be 100% sure you've got that clearance there. See, I've only worked on uh, old gearboxes in yeah. the past, yeah. which none of them have that uh, that input shaft O-ring. Right, okay. So yeah. that's because it's got a lock-up clutch in the front of it. Yeah. Um, which what that does is basically takes when you're, it's computer controlled when you're over 80 k's an hour in overdrive, the computer will engage a solenoid, which releases the pressure from the converter, which is what that O-ring's there to seal, which locks in the overdrive, uh, the, the lock-up clutch in the converter, which basically takes the torque converter out of action and makes it just a direct drive. Right, okay. It's all for efficiency. It takes any any slip out of the converter, which yep. you normally have about 5% loss. Yeah. Depends how well the converter's built. If people say a high stall, you'll lose heaps, you know, sitting on the highway, they're a pain, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, the one that I got from SDE, like, sit on the highway at 100, there's barely any slip, like nothing. Yeah. You put your foot into it and there's nothing. You know, it's, it's great. It's a high stall when you want it to be a high stall, but when you're just cruising, it does what it's meant to. It's yeah. really well set up. Yeah. Whereas if you bought like an eBay special, yeah. <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have slip all the time. Yeah. Cool. Put it in the car. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Just want to look in the back of your car. Yeah, I'm just checking the headlining. <laughs> still, still there. There um, we go. Oh, that's the stuff. We're not responsible for any injuries that may occur in using said ladder to get the bolts out of your boot. <laughs> Future reference: Take the gearbox parts out of the boot before putting the car on a hoist. <laughs> for all the people going, why doesn't he just lower it down? There's a a gearbox and a stand holding up an engine. Yeah. One of those. Alright. Yeah. Left one's closed and right one's closed. All good? Yep. Just dip those up. That was, um, wasn't that bad as I thought nah, it would be. Nah, they're that not was... that bad. Yeah. Definitely a lot easier on a hoist. Yeah, like, um, for sure. And yeah, awesome to be able to have James let us use his shop like this. Yeah, <laughs> definitely helps. Yeah, for sure.
All right, so that's the gearbox in the car. Um, now it's just a process of all the fiddly things, like this rear cross member, some cooler lines. I'm gonna flush out all the cooler lines before I attach anything back up, get all the old all the old uh, ATF out of there. Um, yeah, so all the fiddly stuff, hook up all the wiring, the selectors, and you should be good to go.